pastoral or pastors come and go, but people stay. Pastoral transitions are times in which people are reminded of that fact. The church is the people. Sometimes we forget that. We forget our Baptist principle of the priesthood of all believers. And growing up in church Sunday school, that was rammed into me. Priesthood of believers. Priesthood of believers. Priesthood of believers. <laughs> Can you stop with that? <laughs> no, priesthood of believers. We, we, sometimes we think that we need a priest, a pastor, to be the go-between with God and to do ministry for us. And I, let me say, a seventh pastor is nice. A seventh pastor is wonderful because there is someone here year after year. But the pastor is not worth a wooden nickel if the pastor doesn't empower the people to do God's work in the church, in the community, and around the world. Let me tell you what's happening here in terms of a settled pastor. Things are happening. The previous pastor left at the end of February 2022. I have served since the end of August 2022, just over three months, like I said. My energies have been spent in two ways during this time with you. I've been getting to know you, and getting to know all about you, singing that song from the King and I. And I've been putting in places, in place, structures to move us forward to a settled pastor and to a new chapter in the church's history. Now hear that. A new chapter in the church's history. Yeah, a new pastor. Yeah, yeah, but a new chapter in the church's history. One group has been formed and another group will be formed. We have one group that's met since mid-November. That is a group of church leaders who are looking at the current functioning of the church, who are looking at the roles and responsibilities of the church, who are looking at communications within the church. We meet this Thursday, and our assignment is to look at the bylaws. Please pray for this group. It is a very important group. And in the new year, 2023, the regional staff, the executive ministers, the Executive Ministers of American Baptist Churches of Rhode Island, or ACORI, as it's often called, will help the church form a pastor search committee. And it takes a while to find the right fit between a past settled pastor and congregation. Pastor searches often take a year or longer. But that does not mean that God has paused working in this place. Oh, God says, they don't, they don't have to settle pastor, then let's just sit back and wait. No. To the contrary, it means that God is working through the people who have given themselves to the kingdom of God in this place. And again, you, and you, and you, and you, and you. You are the ones that God has called. You are the ones that God has gathered and sent out. I have come here from the Mid-Atlantic region to New England to help you clarify God's call, to help you respond to that call as faithfully as possible. This church is in a transition, not just from pastor to pastor, but from a church at one stage of faithfulness to a church at a greater stage of faithfulness. And you and God are responsible for that. My teacher for one of my courses in interim ministry training says, our theme is that, or our slogan is that of Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Yes, you can do it, FBCEG. You have been doing it, serving Christ. Despite COVID, despite deaths of key leaders, you have been doing it in love, in faithfulness, in joy. I would like to conclude with one of my favorite poets, the late Lucille Clifton of Baltimore, Maryland. In her poem, Good Times. My daddy has paid the rent, and the insurance man is gone, and the lights is back on, and my uncle Brett is hit for one dollar straight, and they is good times, good times, good times. My mama's made bread, and grandpa has come, and everyone is dancing in the kitchen and singing in the kitchen. Oh, these is good times, good times. Oh, children, think about the good times. At FBCEG, these were good times. These are good times, and these will be good times. Oh, children, think about the good times. 
Let us have some silence.